All right, everybody. I did a uh, calculation of the victory conditions for the game. And it looks like it's an uh, absolute uh, victory for the Central Powers. Looking at all the red objectives that they have in the game, they needed 13 to get an absolute victory by the end of 1915 and I think they got 14 so they passed the threshold for an absolute victory which means that the allies would sue for peace at this point uh, without losing any more territory so I think this is where we're going to call the game uh, right here because I don't think the French can do anything other than, eh, I'd say by June, this game would be completely done. Uh, there wouldn't be any, you know, I know that in about two more turns, they would lose probably, maybe three turns. The French would lose three more cities, most likely, uh, from the way it's looking right now. So, and two of those would be red cities, I think, so. That would put it way over the edge. So that is the end of the game. Uh, uh, it's one of those things where if you ever pick this game up, it's each time I play it's slightly different. It's, you know, in this one where it just seemed like one, you know, the Central Powers decided to run everything to the east and go after the Germans. Instead of going through Belgium, doing the von Schlieffen plan, and then go for Paris, uh, this time they tried to go and take out the slightly weaker force of the uh, Russians. The Russians got a lot of troops. You know, that's one thing that they have, which means that if you throw enough troops th their direction and then you start just taking cities from them, they do get ground down, as you can see. And the, the Russians do not have really the strength other than numbers of, of getting around the defenses. Now, if you look over here, it's like the Austrians don't have a lot. They can barely fight themselves out of a wet paper bag themselves. And with the help of the Germans, they were able to go down south and take out Serbia. So that was the first thing that whenever you play this game, if you play is that you got to throw some help down to the Austrians to take out the Serbs as quick as possible and then get your railroads down there and get your supply lines so you can get to the southern city and take them out as quick as possible. After that objective is done, then uh, the rest of your forces, you're going to be having a lot of your heavy forces going to the uh, west or actually go east and then go for the two cities you know like i did here you go take out this one this one was a tough nut for some reason it took me forever to get take that one this one went pretty quickly this one went fairly quickly uh so once you take those and it, it's kind of like as you've seen the russians once they start losing cities they just can't build their forces back up as quick as possible you know they do get reinforcements for a while but it's the really crappy really you know the troops that are just placeholders to be honest with you they uh prevent the uh like the austrians from doing a good job you know because the austrians have a hard time uh fighting against the the russians head to head but the germans if you use their best troops over on the uh, eastern front, they just uh, go right through the, uh, the Russians quickly. That you know, as you can see, they just march straight across. Now, it kind of helped in one way was that uh, that one lucky die roll of a six for the Central Powers that kept England out of the war in the beginning. That was interesting. That doesn't happen very often. Normally, it's like a limited war or a uh, full on. Uh, warfare that they send troops right into France uh, you know that's like a hex that they can control that the French don't have to worry about and then um, by having the uh, the English neutral that helped move the Italians into the war earlier on the central power side 
So it was a one of those things that's uh, um, you just see like a domino effect where one group affects the next group from the next group. So by having the English staying out of the war, that brought the Italians in the war, which opened up a front on the south side. Now, if the Italians joined the uh, Allies, next thing you know, you have a front open up over here. So the Austrians and the Germans have to throw troops over here instead of facing off against the Russians. So, you know, that's one thing where... Uh, historically, the uh, Austrians and you know they just lined up here and kept the Italians out because the Austrian troops are good enough in the defense to keep the Italians from doing anything because the Italians don't necessarily have some good strength. They once again they would be uh, sitting in one of those uh, defensive perimeters and they're kind of like the Russians. A lot of the different troops out there are not as good well um, equipped like the Germans are or the French or the British. So it's one of those deals where the Austrians had to, you know, fight it out. And there's been many games where, you know, they will sit over here and go into the defensive. You try to take out and they'll be on a two front war against the Russians and the Italians. And then the Germans are sitting there in a two front war you know, going back and forth. And I've learned that if you're playing the central powers, Russia is the keys. You got to uh, hit them as hard as possible, quick as possible to break them, uh, take out a lot of their troops. So it takes them forever to start rebuilding because they, you know, they can rebuild pretty quickly, but it's with really cheap troops, which can't really do the offensive part of it. So that is the one thing they got to do. So that is some thoughts that they have in it. Now, this offensive over here kind of stalled down in the south just because I didn't send my railroad building guys because they're needed on the eastern front to get, you know, we're focusing on the Russians in this game. If I would have had one of these guys over here and moved my uh, offensive over here and then started moving more German troops down here, this probably would have broke open uh, a little faster. But... Uh, it went pretty good while the, there was a lot of good German troops down there, but after they got taken out, I just redeployed them up there when they went on the offensive, one across the border, because once the French, you know, it's kind of like you, you realize after you're playing this game, there's a tipping point. For certain nations, you would see that there's a tipping point with them. And then when the French had a whole pile of uh, casualties up there, they couldn't rebuild quickly. And then they were on a two-front war. This is basically the France's two-front war here. And next thing you know, they don't have enough strength up there to replace uh, what's needed down here or back and forth. So when the Germans came across the frontier, they just started wrecking. You know, it's like a wrecking ball going through, tearing holes in the lines. And then, and that's just, you recognize that it's when uh, things start going downhill pretty quickly. And then you can tell when that happens, unless you get one of those evil defender exchanges, which I was like, oh man, every time you see a defender exchange is you're attacking. Yeah, you took the hex out. You, you can go into the hex, but you just lost a bunch of attack strength that you have to rebuild. That is the hard part in this game. You know, there's a lot of attrition like that that happens, which kind of looks at, you know, when you look at the war, there's a lot of attrition going on. And a lot of the attacks were usually one-to-one -one, one attacks, maybe two-to-one attacks uh, on the Eastern Front, or even the Western Front, for that matter. The uh, Germans... You know, as much as they uh, like to show in this game that they're pretty strong, but, you know, even the generals had problems in the in back in that war of not uh, knowing exactly how to uh, fight that war. It was a lot, a lot of learning on both sides. So that's uh, some of my thoughts with this game. I like it. I enjoy playing this many, many times over the years. Almost 30. I five, let's see, I got this in 81. Yeah, so I guess it's been 39 years playing this game. This 
board is worn out. So a lot of the mentors are, or Connors, I should say, are still there working good, still re readable. Box is beat up, but you know, that's just the nature of the game. All right. Hope you guys like this, and uh, we'll bring another game along here soon. All right. I'll crack stuff.